water, coffee. You have to have everything you need. <laughs> I really should have a checklist, but next time I'll have a checklist because I like che checklists. Uh, they sort of make me feel a little more secure. Uh, and that's good. So uh, here I am. Happy Sunday to you. I'm back in my home gym uh, environment. Hanging out with my washing machine. Hello, thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, it's been a couple weeks since I've uh, talked to you and broadcast live. Things have been super busy. Um, trying to take steps to continue moving forward and making progress. And it gets challenging, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? It gets challenging sometimes. So part of, hi, hi Jose. Hi, Muscle Bob. Hi, Ali. Hi, Aunt B. Jeremy, nice to see you. Thank you for saying hello to me. Hi, King. Jared, how are you all doing? How are you all doing? Don't just say fine if you're not just fine. Keep it real. This is some challenging times sometimes. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Nosy. <laughs> Pete, it's really nice to see you all. I hope you're doing well. Uh, come by and do laundry. Yeah. Look, here's the thing. It's good to multitask, right? And if I got to be in here anyway, I do my washboard abs and I do my wash at the same time. You know what I mean? It works. It really works. All my laundry is done, by the way, because I'm spending more time in the laundry room. So there is that. And if you come here to do laundry, I'm going to make you do push-ups and I'm going to make you do some working out with me too. So that would be good for you. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Oh, a little family tragedy. I'm sorry to hear that, Jared. My, um, I hope everything's okay. I hope everything's okay. I'm glad you're doing a little bit better. Hi, Tim. Um, yeah, so um, I think that we all understand um, challenges and frustrations. Uh, and difficult times um, and figuring how to manage that is is a real thing. I can tell you that my whole life um, dealing with challenges, the workout uh, nature have been really, really important uh, tools for me to cope with difficult situations. And of course, um, you know, friends, family who are there who can maybe not solve the problems, but listen, you know. Uh, so if, if you're going through a tough time now, um, then, um, you know, I'm sorry to hear it. And I hope that things get better quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe you can find some escape, uh, some clarity in a workout. Um, I am absolutely staying pumped yes muscle bob thank you for asking uh, the last time i broadcast i shared with you a new piece of equipment that i got into the gym and then i talked about using the trx which has become one of my new uh preferred pieces of equipment here in this modified gym setup and here i'm going to show you show you you can see my racks are over there um, I'm kind of in the way. Can you see my racks? The beautiful thing about these racks is that because they're separate legs, I can pretty much put them anywhere. I can set them up and then I can move them out of the way. And that's really important. As you can see, you know, I've got all kinds of stuff. Don't look over there. That's kind of like a, it's a big closet. 
Um, but the beautiful thing about having this kind of modular home gym equipment is that I could get it out of the way, I could pull it out when I need to use it, I could put it away when I don't need to use it. And um, because I'm continuing, I'm continuing to figure out uh, a viable home gym workout for myself, I got to thinking about all my options, right? I've ordered a couple other pieces of equipment and when those come in, I'll share them with you. And because I'm reorganizing my space and I'm going through boxes and stuff that I haven't looked at for honestly years, decades even, I've discovered things that I had that I forgot I bought. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Oh, Cindy, when the gyms open, do I think I'm going to go uh, still stay in the home gym? Here's the thing. I don't think I'm ever going to not have my home gym set up because I am going in the direction of having a setup um, and keeping a setup so that schedule gets tight. I can still get the workout in. Weather gets bad. I can still get the workout in. There's something... Um, that I really like about being able to do it at home. And in my mind, I'm also thinking about, can I get my parents in here to work out with me? Have like sort of this quiet um, area for people like my parents who maybe don't feel comfortable going to a gym. Can I use the space to encourage them and work with them, which is part of what I wanna do. So I think I'm always gonna have a home gym set up because uh, I, think, I think I can make it work for me. Now, I wanna, I wanna share something with you. The other day I was looking through my stuff, I mentioned, uh, and I found, and I posted a picture of this. I posted a picture of this the other day. I found a thigh master. I, I found, do you guys remember this? Some of you are not old enough to remember a thigh master. Anybody? <laughs> hey, Don. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. Thank you so much. You have no idea. Uh, you helped me with my stage fright, so I want to thank you. Okay, so who remembers the thigh master? Anybody? Those late night commercials? I posted this on social this week. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Love back. Um, <laughs> the, the commercials, right? So, um, Susan, Suzanne Summers, right? The Thigh Master commercial. And so I pulled this out. This is kind of like the hula hoop discovery for me a couple years ago. I mean, um, a couple months ago. Um, yes, I'm losing track of time. Um, what made me laugh to think about using it. Now, I found this years ago. I was walking around a, a Goodwill store and I was looking through the workout stuff and I thought, is there anything here like ankle weights that somebody discarded, little dumbbells that I could use? And then I found this thing and I bought it kind of as a joke. And then I put it in my closet, totally forgot about it, and then found it uh, last week. And I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna demonstrate. This thing has some real torque. Look, look, I, yes, it is a thigh master designed for adduct work, adduction, abduction work for the inner thighs. That's what it was designed for, that was, it was created. And this is one of those home gym pieces of equipment that didn't cost a lot of money. You could buy it marketed to women to work the inner thighs because you know we women think about our thighs a lot i think we think about them less now than we did years ago right it's less of a thing now i think but anyway we want to tone up in a way that's convenient that doesn't put us in a gym environment that makes us feel uh, self-conscious and so that's where this kind of piece of equipment comes from And if you, you could see the flexion in my arm, 
Can you see that? This has real torque. Impressed? <laughs> I'm impressed. They have a ring now. What? They have a ring now. What are you saying, Cindy? <laughs> so, okay, so let me tell you what I discovered. Let me tell you what I discovered. Okay, first I'm going to, so I'm using it for the upper body, which by the way, you can use it for the upper body. All right, I want to show you something. So, work, work with me here, work with me here. Now, I'm not going to lie, the squeakiness scares me a little bit because I don't know how old this thing is. And something about it feels like it might pop. And just like, if it pops, you know, you don't want to be in front of it for sure because there's so much torque on this thing. It's got, I think, a, a metal a bands. I'm not saying that right. I know you remember Suzanne Summers, Andy. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. When I decided I wanted to show you this piece of home gym equipment, I thought I need to pull out my leg warmers and my leotards, and I need to go all in on a thigh master workout for my channel people, if nothing else, to hopefully make you laugh. Because that's part of what I need to do. Bring it back, Cindy. <laughs> Okay, Cindy, I'm totally going to find those leg warmers, and I'm totally going to find a, piece, a leotard, and I'm going to go, like, all Jane Fonda on you, okay? <laughs> so, how much does this cost? You know? <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Wait, let me, let me do this. Let me do this, because this is too, oops. Wait, wait. Sorry, I hope I'm not killing you with noise. Thank, thank you. So, I tried this thing. And I honestly, I, I questioned whether or not uh, this would work, my quadriceps, and whether or not there was any benefit to doing this movement. And even though you gotta hold on to it because it's slippery and it feels like it's just gonna go boing and go flying off, because it will. <laughs> This really does work. It'll work the inner thighs. You just gotta get past the noise. <laughs> it, home gym equipment is always good to have around. Oh. <laughs> so if you can get past the noise and you can do it, you are actually working the muscles in the inner thigh. You are doing adduction movement it's a limited range of motion but here's the thing you know you see those late night commercials you ever wonder whether or not that equipment really works whether or not it's a waste of money or thank you so much Rex that's for my next home gym piece of equipment thank you so much for sponsoring me <laughs> thank you <laughs> So you ever want you wonder whether or not this kind of stuff works and I've been in gyms for 30 plus years so I go to gyms with commercial equipment and that's what I use and and that's the best stuff um, and I always encourage people look go to a gym uh, spend the money because of the diversity because of the environment the motivation you're going to get those are the benefits of going to a real gym and that is true hundred percent nothing has changed uh, even with the COVID situation forcing us to stay home. Um, I will be going back to the gym. But home gym equipment, you know what home gym equipment doesn't work? Hi, Jaren. Hi, Jaren. Do you know what home, gym what home gym equipment doesn't work? There's a lot of stuff out there. And it occurred to me that the only home gym equipment that doesn't work is the equipment you don't use. So if you buy it in here, look, I'm, I'm getting a chest workout. Look, I am, 
I am working my pecs. I can feel it in my shoulders. I can feel it in my biceps. I can feel it in my arms, my chest. So it works, but it only works if you use it. And that's true of everything, right? That's true of everything. It's designed to make you uh, have something to use in the comfort of your own home. The problem is the motivation doesn't come in the box, right? That's the problem. The problem is not necessarily the equipment or not having equipment because you can always figure out how to work out without equipment. The problem is the lack of motivation. You can't package that. And that's the stuff I always think about. You know what I mean? She-Hulk. I can't wait for She-Hulk to come out. Ugh. You think a lot of people would be surprised at what you can benefit. Exactly, uh, Jared. It's such a great point. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm actually interested in what you guys and girls think about this, is that it's not so much what you're using. It's... How do you get the motivation to follow through and to stick with it? Because you might get it in the box, you're excited, you start working with it. Like me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this and like, I really feel this. But what is it going to take for me to pull this back out and to get onto a disciplined, consistent workout regimen? That's the trick, right? Am I the only one? I'm not the only one who... who battles to stay motivated and it is a battle so thigh master people by the way I discovered that they're still selling this this is still available if you look for this you'll find this this is still available and it's a pretty inexpensive piece of equipment just saying the other thing that I found in all the stuff I was going through <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Did I say that? Thank you so much. Thank you for sponsoring me and thank you for subscribing to my channel. Did I say that? I mean it. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So the other thing I found I want to show you. Hang on one second. Don't go anywhere. Is I found this thing. You got, I think you've seen this. So I'm just gonna show you, I'm, I'm just gonna show you what I found and how I worked with it. And then if I'm missing your questions or your comments, please forgive me, I can't see them. But I'm gonna show you what I found, okay? And then share some of the things that I do to keep my motivation alive, all right? Because that's what I really wanna share with you today because it's a struggle. And I know it is, and I'm not gonna make believe that it's not a struggle because it is. Staying motivated is a struggle. Sometimes it feels like, what's the point? Um, and I'm gonna tell you what the point is too, from my point of view. So stick with me for just a minute and, and then I'll answer your questions and, and I'd love to see you know your comments too. I found this. Rex, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the sponsorship. <laughs> make tortillas you can make tortillas with this is that what you're saying I, I yeah I guess you could <laughs> uh, here's the thing everything's got more than one use a lot of times you just have to be creative and that's pretty creative just saying okay uh, okay so let me show you this so I found this you know what this is this is an ab wheel this is just two wheels on a handle that rolls independently for abdominal training. Um, and you could get this for like 10 bucks. I think I found this thing at like a Marshalls or something, but our Walmart or something, you could find these for like 10 bucks. But on that day that I was also looking at, I'm gonna show you the other one I found. Check this out. Have you guys seen this one? Program called Insanity. I've never used a program called Insanity. That, right, so, so the, those are the inexpensive. 
inexpensive. And and again, the kind of stuff that you could just you put it in a closet somewhere. It doesn't really take up a lot of room, and it can be really effective. Here's another version of this one's called the Ab Slide, right? Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate. Okay, I'm gonna, now don't go anywhere because then I'll answer your questions and I want to see your comments. Okay, you with me? Okay, thank you, thank you for staying with me. Okay, so all right, first I gotta get my coffee cup out of the way, which by the way says just the right amount of wrong. Because you gotta be comfortable being a little wrong sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna make some room here so I can demonstrate. This is, this is me, um, it's getting hot in here. This is me demonstrating, can you see? See, I don't think, here, I'm gonna tilt this down. I'm gonna tilt this down. See if that is gonna be good. Tilt this down. Okay, can you see me? Yeah, okay. I think, all right. So, two different ab rollers. This is like a, I don't know, five to $10 ab roller. And then this one, it's probably more money because it's got four wheels on it and a wider handle. For, I think for more balance. So for somebody who um, maybe is still slowly building core strength, because that's what this is working, something that's wider, I believe would be more helpful than something that's narrow. So I tried this, and I'm gonna admit, this was buried in the closet, I have never used this thing uh, up until I found it. Now, there's several ways you could use this. And I'm up on my knees, and I'm working my core because you're extending out your core is doing the work and pulling myself back in. And the idea with this is not to hyperextend, right? Not to curve your back and your spine, but to keep it tucked in, your pelvis tucked in, so that your core is doing the work and you're not hurting your lower back. And that one feels pretty good. It's got a pretty wide, like shoulder width expands. So I feel like I have more balance on this thing because it's wider, you see that? Now, the other thing I noticed with this one is that it feels like it's got gears, so it stops you. It's sort of, um, it's got gears, so it's helping me control how far it goes out and pulling it back in which I think is good if you're still building core strength. So this feels like it's holding you back a little bit. And if you're still building your core strength and you're not quite strong enough to go all the way out, that one has like a little bit of a stop. And I think that's beneficial for somebody who's just slowly building the core. So there's that. Are you still with me? Still with me? Yeah? Thumbs up? <laughs> yeah? Okay, so I'm going to show you this one. Hi, thank you for joining me. Hey, Patrick, you're with me. Okay, cool. Stay with me. All right, so here is like the $10, $8 one that you could get, I don't know, Walmart, Ross. I think I found this at Goodwill people. Anyway, this one has a closer grip you could see the other one was like shoulder width apart and I think more balanced this one brings my hands closer together and when I tried this when I tried this one there's nothing stopping me right from extending forward and back I 
I have more flexibility, more range of motion on which area I could go. I could work my obliques. Just the core. Just the core is what I'm thinking. And it feels like this one requires more strength because I'm more narrow. And even though I can also steer better, there's more flexibility here, I feel like I need a little more core strength to do this one. But it's a great inexpensive piece of equipment that you could have at home. And you could do on an empty piece of uh, floor space, right? You can see you can see that. Okay, cool. So now, one more. Now this is just related to the um, ab core roller. You didn't use your knees. Okay, I'll be back to your questions. Okay, so here's what I discovered because. When I was playing with all this home gym stuff and thinking about, does this work, does this not work, how does it feel, what am I feeling when I'm doing it? When I'm working out, as I'm training and as I'm getting into the positions, I take my time, um, I try to make, to make myself as comfortable as possible, and while I'm doing the repetition, I'm thinking about, okay, what do I feel? What's getting uh, innervated here? What muscle groups are getting uh, charged here. What am I? What am I working? What's my core objective? Which, no pun intended, my core objective here is to work core. And do I feel that when I'm doing the exercise? That's that mind muscle, mind body connection that I'm always looking for to make sure that I'm isolating the muscle group that I want to isolate while I'm training it, to make sure nothing else jumps in and takes over, right? So. I thought about what if I didn't have this and instead I pulled out my barbell, which of course I have. So you know I have a standard weight uh, set at home. I'm going to make some more room here for myself. Okay, I gotta move the furniture. I gotta move the furniture. Okay, I'm back. So I tested my barbell, which has got two plates on it, to see if I could get the same benefit and even change my grip. <laughs> and it works. I was able to get the same benefit of the ab roller with same exact range of motion that I could do with this thing. So it's an either or, or you could use them both. See that? You didn't try your knees. So, so for the person who said you didn't try it on your knees, let me give you a couple tips that I learned. I did this on just a regular hard floor. Your knees will kill you. So get a towel um, or a small blanket, fold it up, get yourself a nice little cushion. Right now I'm on my foam floor pieces. There's only six pieces to help your knees and then your knees will not be an issue. So you definitely want to protect your knees by putting it going down on a pillow or maybe a blanket, something that's gonna be uh, same. So, and then you put it on your knees. 
and you do the exercise. Um, and the thing about this exercise is that, here, I'm gonna come back up here. You can work your core, and if you have a nice strong core, and you will if you do these consistently and you do other abdominal exercises, you can do progressions that are harder. You can do progressions that are harder. You can do, I've seen people do rolls from standing position. And then I've seen people slowly start getting their core stronger by just doing stepping. Getting your core stronger. And then you could put your feet on the wood. So there's all these variations that you can do to keep building the strength of your core. Because the thing about working out and getting stronger is that as you progress in your strength building, your body wants you to continue to challenge it, right? The difficulty is not that you can't do it, because you can, even if you're starting from like le level zero. The difficulty is the motivation. That's the difficulty. Am I right? For many of us. And here, I'm, I'm in my home gym with a million chores that I could do a million reasons why I don't make it into this room to improve my strength and my health and my mental well-being. A million excuses I could find just in my house alone. And so what I do to try to find the motivation is I think about what I want, which is the results. And you may have noticed, you may have noticed I started to hang, I started to hang pictures of some of the athletes who've inspired me. So watch out because the next time you see this is probably going to be covered in pictures <laughs> to help with my motivation. Okay, so I'm going to sit down for a minute so I can see your questions and answer your questions. And I want to thank you for joining me and thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and smashing the like bucket button. If you like my videos, I appreciate it so much. Um, let me get my chair. Really just moving, just moving equipment around is a good workout too. All right, I'm going to sit down so I can see you. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, Cindy, how long are my ab workouts? That's a great question. So, um, hang on, I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. I'm going to bring you guys. I want to tell you that just doing that demonstration, I can feel the tightening in my abs and in my arms, and it feels good. Um, Sometimes I do like a 15 minute ab workout. Sometimes um, I get up in the morning and I do uh, morning crunches. So I do four sets of 30 crunches and then I'll do four sets of um, uh, 25 to 30 leg raises and then I'll do four sets of knee ins and I can blow through that in 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. And when I really want my abs to show, I do that every day or every other day. Okay? You could do abs every single day. If you really want to rock a, a six pack, you can work your abs every single day. Some of the people that I know who have the best abdominal uh, abs work them every single day and you could do 15 minutes a day and just make that the beginning of your day or make that the end of your day okay 
Is that helpful? I hope that's helpful to you. The other thing I do is when I do a set, let's say I'm training chest, when I do a set for chest and I've got like a minute wait in between, uh, instead of just standing around for a minute, I'll do a set of twists and then I do my next set. So I like to multitask, Cindy, if I'm working arms, I'll probably throw abdominals in in between. You know, while I'm resting my arms, I'll do a set of abdominals and I'm just I'm multitasking, I'm using up my time and I'm being as efficient as I possibly can and the results show in my, abd my abdominals, okay? You can find it at any time. There is no best time of day, by the way. Uh, there is no best time of day. Ooh, people, it's hot in here. Okay. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, oh, you guys are reacting to the Frank Zane picture up on the wall. Um, I remember the day that, that we got that autograph. Uh, I was at the Arnold Sports Festival, and it was, you know, an icon. You get to talk to an icon of the sport, and uh, I feel very privileged to have had the opportunity to meet him and talk to him. Um, it's, it's, a, it's pretty amazing. Uh, that's true of um, Ed Corney, who's up here in this photo. I don't know if you could see this. I got Ed Corney up there, and um, the original Gold Gym logo that was created by Rick Drayson, another great friend uh, from the bodybuilding and wrestling world, uh, who we just lost. Um, may his uh, memory always make us feel blessed. Um, so, uh, questions? Ed is from, was from Hawaii, yes. One of the nicest people you ever want to meet, the Silver Fox, and one of the greatest posers in the history of the sport of men's bodybuilding. Um, the first time I saw Ed uh, Corny uh, posing was the year I turned pro in 95. And I'll never forget watching him walk out onto the stage uh, and do his posing routine with that incredible head of white hair. Um, it was magnificent, magnificent. Am I thinking about competing next year? I'm not, I'm not thinking about competing. Um, I'm thinking about doing something else and I'll share that, uh, I'll share that next week when I talk to, uh, to you all because I'm working on something that I am thinking about getting myself ready for and getting into training specifically for and I will share that with you guys next week. Yes, uh, a, a very long time ago, um, Jared, a very long time ago. So, <laughs> how to date strong women? Hmm. Well, here's the thing, right? The awesome thing about the fans of women's bodybuilding is that they love strong women. To me, that's always one of has been one of the great things about. Uh, the fans of women's bodybuilding. I appreciate that. Not every, not every culture feels that way. You know, some, in some cultures, uh, people are intimidated by the idea of a fit, strong, powerful, athletic woman. Um, and I think more and more the world is starting to see athletic, fit, strong women as not something to be intimidated by, but something to be motivated by. Um, and so I think that if you let strong women know that you love that that power um, and that you're not intimidated by it I think that that's alluring so just just saying I hope that's helpful <laughs> have I considered being a judge in bodybuilding you know I thought about it um, but not I didn't spend too much time thinking about it my schedule just doesn't has not given me um, the time with all the other things that I have going on. Um, but I have thought about it and I have great friends who are judges. And I think that former athletes make great judges because they know what it takes to get on stage. Uh, they know the hard work, the sacrifice, the dedication. I, so I think um, former athletes make really good judges. Uh, not only former athletes, but that it's a good thing to do. 
Do I have Facebook? I do. I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook, though. But I do have Facebook. Always, yes, always busy. So uh, I saw a question here. Cindy, when I started working out, did I know I wanted to do competitive bodybuilding? Um, I didn't know I wanted to do competitive bodybuilding when I started working out, but once I started working out, um, I was intrigued. And as soon as I started looking at magazines and seeing women athletes, I, I knew almost immediately. So it was, it was an immediate attraction for me for the most part. Um, the first time I went into the gym, uh, I loved it and I knew that I wanted to keep doing it. I begged my parents to let me go to the gym because I was only a teenager. Um, and when I started to see photos of women bodybuilders, and back then there were women who were doing competitions where they were doing mixed pairs um, and having a dance background, I knew that, uh, that that was something I was attracted to and that I wanted to do. So I did know early on. Thank you for the question. I got my She-Hulk here. I said somebody was talking about She-Hulk earlier. I said somebody was talking about She-Hulk earlier. <laughs> Who was talking about She-Hulk? Oh, yes. She-Hulk. What's not to love? about a powerful, athletic, what is not to love about just turning into this powerful, make things right, individual, ah. Who was talking about she -Hulk? <laughs> So, I think there's a She-Hulk movie coming out. Uh, I think there's a She-Hulk movie coming out. And I know there's a Wonder Woman movie coming out, which I'm waiting for. I can't wait to see. Um... Have I, I've never met The Rock. No, I have never met The Rock. Not yet. Who else? Arnold Schwarzenegger, yes, several times. Talked to Arnold, competed at his competition, of course, for the better part of my uh, professional career. You only, okay, so here's a question related to strong women. Um, I think there's a misconception that um, strong women only want to date other bodybuilders or that bodybuilders only want to date bodybuilders or fitness athlete only. But I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true at all. I think that in some cases that's true, but I, I, uh, that's not true across the board. So I don't think you should think about that or worry about that or let that hold you back uh, at all. Because everybody, you know, a lot, opposites attract a lot. So a lot of times somebody who's an athlete and very focused on their sport doesn't want another athlete. Uh, it, you know, they want the opposite. So just remember that. Opposites attract. Terry Crews. Uh, no, I haven't met Terry Crews that I know of. You know, when I go to the Arnold Sports Festival, when I go to the Olympia event, um, I meet so many people. I've had the great pleasure of meeting so many people, so many athletes, um, and uh, I can't keep track of uh, all the names. The people that I know the best are the people that I've had the pleasure of competing with, you know, the many years that I competed and, uh, and the fans that I've met that I get to see every single year because it's sort of like a family reunion. Um, but no, I don't think I have yet. Op 100% opposites attract. 
attract, right? You know that, of course. It's, it's the nature, it's that balance, it's the yin yang that I think most of us are really attracted to. We, you know, we need that balance. So, and I believe in that, I don't know. It's all, it's all about a balance. Um, can't wait for Wonder Woman. So I'm gonna tell you, um, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm working on something now that I might start training for. In fact, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It's gonna be challenging. I feel like I need a challenge. I feel like I need a goal to keep me motivated and inspired to train myself and to push myself. I think that's a really important way to stay motivated is to pick a goal, to challenge yourself, um, and maybe even do it with other people, even if it's virtually. Um, pick a goal, a 30-day goal, a 10-day goal, a 15-day goal, and stick it out, whatever it is. You know, just put it on a calendar and say, okay, I'm gonna do this for this period of time. Um, I think that's an important part of staying motivated. So that's where my head is at right now. I'm continuing to build my little gym environment. Um, I've got more stuff coming in. Uh, you know, I pulled out the thigh master and I'm looking for ways to stay up, stay pumped, stay motivated. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to read this question. Did you ever face obstacles because of your scoliosis? You have scoliosis and I'm not as strong and I'd like to be, but I'm working on it. Okay, thank you for that question related to scoliosis, Bruce. Um, one of the biggest obstacles I faced because of scoliosis was my fear. Um, when I discovered I had scoliosis, um, and I had a problem walking, my fear was that I wasn't gonna be able to do the things that I wanted to do. Um, but then I got past that very quickly. I was young, I was ambitious, um, and uh, I took a step back, felt better so that I could then take steps forward. Uh, and I decided that I would work to strengthen my back. As I was pursuing a bodybuilding career, my passion for women's bodybuilding uh, the first photos I saw of my back when I was getting ready to compete, you could clearly see the curvature in my spine. And bodybuilding is a sport of symmetry. And when you have an asymmetrical uh, deficiency, let's say you have an asymmetry, it's considered a deficiency, it's considered a problem. My fear that I wasn't going to be able to overcome my scoliosis, which is just the structure of my spine and the offset of my hips, scared me and I thought maybe I can't be a great bodybuilder maybe I can't compete uh, in the pro ranks um, that scared me but I didn't let it stop me I kept training at the time I had a wonderful trainer Robert Messino uh, and I looked at my back we looked at my back we worked on bringing up the deficiencies in my back. We sort of, you know, looked at where are the problems? Where's the asymmetry? The things that we couldn't fix, we couldn't fix, we had to work around. And I built my back up through training uh, to spite my scoliosis and discovered that through training, I could strengthen my back, I could strengthen my weakness. Um, through paying close attention to my asymmetry, I could pose my body in a way that would allow me to hide the scoliosis by holding my body in certain ways. I could hide, I could create an illusion. And so that's a long answer, but what I wanna to say to you is, do not let scoliosis or anything else stop you from working towards the things you wanna accomplish because what you will discover is that you can do things that you don't think you can do. You will discover that there's more than one way to do something, okay? And I competed at the Miss Olympia. I won the Night of Champions. I was second place. Those are my highest rankings in the pros at the Miss International with scoliosis. And I'm still training today with scoliosis. So um, I think it's your job to protect your spine. 
so that you have a good quality life for as long as possible. Uh, and weight training is the way to do it. I hope that answers your question and I hope that helps you because it I'm gonna I'm gonna share photos of my early career of the scoliosis that showed and then I will share photos of the contrast uh, as I built my back how I could hide the scoliosis through my training I'm gonna share that with you so you can see that hi Pascal Yeah, I get it, Bruce. Um, you can be nervous, but don't be afraid because you can, uh, you can build on your weakness and even turn it into a strength, which is ultimately what I ended up doing. My back shot in bodybuilding was one of my best shots, if you could believe that. It's kind of crazy. But um, so I, I hope you believe me when I say that to you. Thank you. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the before and after. Uh, of my back poses and when I was an amateur coming up when I was building my back to when I was uh, at my most successful as a pro competitor with scoliosis I'm going to show you the before and the after so you can see the difference for yourself um, and speaking of back flexing I think I should flex my scoliosis back so you can see I think I should I think I should. <laughs> I think I should flex my scoliosis back. So you can see. <laughs> All the rage. I'm really thank you for saying that. That is a huge compliment. Um, you know, I think challenges are made to be overcome. I think challenges are made to be challenged. I don't know. You might not win, you might fail, but you're gonna learn something in the process. You know what I mean? And you should have fun trying. Um, uh, there's, there's, everybody, everybody deals with that. You just, the difference is do you let it stop you or do you just find a way around it? And I encourage you to find a way around it. Uh, and that's why I'm not afraid to let you see me sweat. I am, look, I'm so sweaty right now. Look, I'm not afraid to let you see me sweat. I'm not. I'm so sweaty right now. I'm all red in the face. I'm not, I'm not afraid to let you see that this is, we're all the same. You know, we all get nervous. I get nervous before I come on and talk to you. I have to do jumping jacks. I get, you know, <laughs> we're all the same. You just got to push through. If exactly. An obstacle is designed to make you think and to make you creative. Obstacles are designed to make you think about how am I gonna get around that? Am I gonna get over it? Am I gonna go under it? Am I gonna go to the side? Am I gonna go, am I gonna go through it? Obstacles are designed to challenge you to think more creatively, you know? And even if you fail, it's still gonna be good for you. That's just my take. Uh, believe me, I failed many times. Okay, so I shared a whole bunch of stuff. I shared the ab rollers, a couple different versions here. This one and this one and my thigh master. I'm going to put links for all of this uh, in my description of this video so that if you're interested in looking at these, there's also other great tutorials out there. You're going to be able to find those. Um, and if you're interested in any of the stuff, the links that I post, follow those links. That supports my channel, and I really appreciate you supporting my channel. It allows me to continue to do more videos, to share more with you. Um, it allows me to produce videos and get Llama Pictures to uh, do more video work for me, which um, I appreciate. But uh, So thank you for that, because that support allows me to do that, too. Um, and then there's the, hang on, of course there is the Thigh Master, which is also available. <laughs> I'm going to share a link to this because you might want one of these things. Um, and if you like my, uh, my videos, please subscribe. 
Um, and if you like this video, please like it. Smash that like button, like, you know, She-Hulk style. Uh, and leave me a comment. I, I probably missed your comment um, or your question, and if I did, please put it in the comment section after this goes live, and then I will spend time um, to answer your questions. Sing? Somebody's asking me if I sing. I don't think you want to hear me sing. I'll tell you what. Let me know when it's your birthday and then I'll sing. Okay? Because <laughs> I could get away with it. You know, like everybody's okay if you sing bad or poorly for a birthday. You still feel good about it. <laughs> uh, um, thank you so much for joining me and for um, making me feel so comfortable doing live broadcasts with you and talking to you. It means a, a lot to me. Um, and uh, I appreciate your time. I hope I share information of value. I hope I'm able to motivate you um, the way you all motivate me. And um, look for my next videos. I have to talk llama pigs into posting the videos that I have. I'm working on video for Rex because you had questions about my competition days um, in 95. Um, and I also want to show you some of the before and afters on my back. Because when I look at it, it's shocking. But, um... Challenges are made to overcome 100%. So, it is my goal to do a live broadcast next Sunday. So hopefully you can join me again. Same bat channel, same bat time. And in the meantime, one inch of movement is worth more than a mile of intention. Okay? One inch of movement is worth more than a mile of intention. Don't think about it. Move. Your body will thank you. Your mind will thank you. Stay pumped. Okay? Keep moving forward. Even moving in place is better than not moving at all. Okay? I impress upon you. Stay pumped. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for joining me. Rex, thank you so much for the sponsorship. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Girl, I am so sweaty.